Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for stopping by our documentation section to learn a little bit more about Divi's design settings and advanced module settings. So Divi comes with literally thousands of different ways that you can customize just about anything on your website. And most of that is built into our design tab on whether it's a row, module, or section. And then one tab over on almost all of those, there's called the advanced tab. And in the advanced tab, there are different text box where you can enter in custom CSS to further customize anything else that our thousands of design settings may not cover. Uh, this is mostly, as the tab might uh, give away, for advanced users, but I think most people, uh, given a little bit of practice, will find that they can do just about anything with um, the design settings or a couple snippets that they pick up here and there from around the web. So without any further ado, here is our video on the advanced design settings and advanced CSS settings. Check it out. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of Divi's design and advanced module settings within the Visual Builder. With the design and advanced settings, you can customize absolutely everything about a section, a row, a column, or a module. Basically, everything you need to design your website can be found in these settings. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, first, let's check out a few examples of the design settings. Uh, the first one we're going to look at is a module, uh, specifically a full width header module. If I go up to settings, you can see uh, if I go to the design tab, you can see all the options I have under the design tab. Uh, if you want to, you can think of the content as kind of like the building blocks and the design is kind of how you design those blocks and arrange them and, and add some custom uh, customizations to them. So uh, once you have your framework, this is kind of where you put everything together. As you can see over here, my design, my content is here. I have my Divi logo here, my uh, title text, uh, title text here, my sub text, subheader text here, my button, and all this is kind of default right now. And it needs, it's kind of bare bones. And uh, even though the content's there, it still needs some design. And that's where the design tab comes in. So the first thing I see is the layout. I can change the layout from left to centered. Uh, that looks pretty good. I can make it full screen if I wanted to. That basically, it's a very powerful feature right out of the box in one click. I can make it span the full width of the browser. I could add a scroll down icon as well. as a icon here if I click it it scrolls down to the next section of the page and I could actually add a custom color to that as well if I wanted to but for now I'm just going to keep it without the full screen and if I wanted to I can go down to the text option uh, specifically the text color, I could toggle it dark or light. If I toggle it light, it makes all the elements within the header module light or, or white in this case, including the title text, the subhead text, and the button. If I wanted to give the actual title text a specific color other than white, I could do it here, along with many other options like changing the title font. Go ahead and change that to something like uh, Roboto Light and increase the font size to say something like 70 here. Could also increase, or uh, sorry, spe specifically set the title font size on different devices here as well. You'll see that throughout uh, other options within the settings. I could specifically change my subheader text as well and just let's increase it to 20 pixels that looks good and just so you know this subhead text title text this all corresponds to the content section so i'm gonna just flip back over to the content section if you look under the text uh section there you can see that there's a title and a subheading so that corresponds to whatever you enter into these boxes here will 
will is what you're designing when you go to the design tab under title text and subhead text. Let's see, uh, sizing text max width. Um, let's go to the button button one. This is actually button one here. Uh, you could put two buttons in the full width header section. But um, this is the one that styles uh, the first button. If I deploy uh, the custom button uh, styles, I can uh, go ahead and add whatever styles I want here. Maybe I want to add a specific color to the button. I could do it. And the button options are pretty ex extensive and very helpful. All right, let's go ahead and save that out. And let's check out a something different. Let's look at a row. If I go to the row sections, settings, I can see that I can change uh, in the, under the design tab, I can change the sizing of the row. I can make it full width. And as you can see in the background, it spans the full width of the browser. Um, I could also use a custom width if I wanted to, um, just kind of shrink it up if I wanted to. Um, I could use custom gutter width. Gutter width basically sets the percentage of margin between each of the columns. So if I wanted to give it a, a, a lesser margin, I can decrease it to two. If I wanted to have zero margin, I can decrease it to one. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it to three for now. And um, let's check out the spacing section. Uh, here we can add some custom padding, not only to the row as a whole, um, but also to the columns within each of the rows. As you can see, there's column one custom padding, column two custom padding, and so on. Column one would be the first one here. So if I wanted to, I could add, just to show you, if I added 100 pixels to the top, you can see that that first column content has, you know, gone down a little because of the padding. And I could do this, I can add custom paddings to each one of these just if I wanted to. Pretty powerful settings there. And of course, uh, you could also customize it per device tablet and smartphone as well. Let's go ahead and save that out. And let's, uh, go, let's go back to our header module and let's look at our advanced settings here. We, we had to look at what the design settings were, but now let's look at what the advanced tab has to offer. So under the advanced tab, you have some of these sections here, CSS ID and classes, custom CSS attributes and visibility. Let's look at the first one, CSS ID and classes. Here you can add CSS ID, a, a specific or custom CSS ID or a CSS class to serve as a, as a selector for this certain module. So if I was a de developer, a designer wanting to target this using uh, an external style sheet for all of my CSS, I could set my custom CSS ID here and then refer to it in my external style sheet and add whatever CSS I wanted to it, which is a helpful feature, very powerful. Um, and if you don't want to use that external style sheet, you can customize the elements within this module within the custom CSS section here. And as you can see, all these boxes here are places where you can add custom CSS and will be applied only to that element and only inside this module. So it's basically a way for you to add all the custom CSS you need to this module or this element within the visual builder and without having to leave the site uh, and use an external style sheet, for example. So uh, as an example, if I wanted to add some padding to the main element, and if you get confused as to what this is referring to, you can click on the question mark here and it will show you the exact class you're targeting here. 
if you need to know that. But if I wanted to, I could add some padding here. And as you can see, it would add the padding to only this element, which is pretty helpful. And as you can see, I have a bunch of elements I could target, logo, title, subtitle, and add some custom CSS to it. Uh, so basically the advanced tab gives you the opportunity of adding a bunch of CSS, uh, advanced CSS on top of all of the wonderful options we have in the design tab. So if you can't do for some reason, uh, you can't do what you want to do in the design tab, you can go ahead and tackle it over in the advanced tab. So whatever it is, whatever needs you have in designing a website, uh, you should be able to tackle it within these two tabs. Let's go down to the next section, attributes. This only applies to some of the modules, but in this case, this applies to the logo with it, cause you can add an image or a logo to this module. Uh, the, this option allows you to give an, an alt text or a, a title text, much like you would in HTML in an image tag. And the next one is visibility. This would be pretty standard throughout all your advanced options. This allows you to disable this specific module on certain devices. So if you are designing a mobile site and or the mobile version of your site and you want to hide certain elements, this is a good place to do that. Uh, for instance, if I wanted to hide this header on mobile for some reason, I could toggle or, or check this uh, phone box here. And now this would, this whole header would be disabled on mobile. Also, I could just disable it on tablet if I wanted to. I could also disable it on desktop. Now, as you can see, it's kind of went faded out in the background. This is because I'm using the visual builder on a desktop. It's basically telling me that now that section is disabled on desktop. This is a very uh, useful feature. Let's go ahead and exit out of here and let's check out the advanced settings on a row. If I go to my row here, go to advanced settings, you'll see some of the same options that I had in my module I now have in my settings. That being the, uh, the CSS ID uh, here, because we have columns within our rows, we now can target each of our individual columns if we wanted to with certain selectors uh, here. Uh, we could also add custom CSS to each of these elements or columns if we wanted to. And of course, the visibility of the row can be disabled on each of these devices. Let's go ahead and save that out. And that's it. We're pretty much uh, done with our overview of the design and advanced settings within the Visual Builder.